Um, how about the government and the private sector? Um, if the private sector is doing well, as it did during the Bill Clinton years, as I showed you the surplus, then the government gets wealthy um, so, and, and vice versa. When the government is down, it leans on you and I. So we get weak. So um, the, you have this private-public interaction taking place too. In fact, that's what one of the reasons for the accumulation of debt is that the economy's been weak, we, so we've been leaning on the government, now the government's coming back to lean back on us, called higher taxes, okay? So they interact with each other. Uh, then how about globalism? If our economy gets weak, Europe, Europe gets weak because we buy less of their goods. They get weak, they buy less of our goods. So all the interactions are positive. So you really can get into a systemic meltdown, which becomes a depression, and you wonder how we've avoided it for so long, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how. The problem with that is the things that we used to, to avoid the depression or the systemic meltdowns in the past no longer work. And I'll tell you what they are. There are a bunch of other things. Um, how about when the government goes down? Um, the, oh, this was wonderful, perfect example. Uh, the U.S. Treasury gets downgraded from AAA to AA+. Plus. About three or four days later, Warren Buffett opens the newspaper and finds out uh, Berkshire Hathaway got downgraded. Why? Because S&P says, well, uh, number one, you're ho you hold U.S. Treasuries. That's, but worse than, but what, even more general, they said, not only are all your assets denominated in, in U.S. dollars, but all your business is in U.S. dollars. And so basically, you're, you're working for an economy that's going down, and you're not internationally diversified. So TIA Kreft down in, in, in New York and USAA down in San Antonio, the same day, MetLife, they all got downgraded. So there was a knockdown. So when the government goes down, it pulls down the private sector. When the private sector goes down, it pulls down the government. So we have all these positive interactions uh, uh, linked together. So now the question becomes, how did we manage from 1946 to 207 to have a, uh, what is that, about a 70-year, um, 60-year, 60 60-year 60 expansion? And we had a 60-year expansion, obviously with about 12 or 14 short recessions. But we had a, a mechanism in place such that on the downside when it occurred, we could kick in some stimulus, and the stick, stimu which no longer we can do because we're in the process of dismantling it. The, the, the three elements of stimulus to, to prevent those kind of positive interactions, melting a system down, was number one, we had the automatic stabilizers built into the fiscal system. This is not by chance. Um, some gentleman by the name of Joseph Peckman. Uh, I found myself Googling, Googling up Joe Peckman because he was still alive. He's not, unfortunately. He's the guy who put the, he put together, quote, a system of automatic stabilizers in the beginning of the Council of Economic Advisor days, which is 1946. Um, basically, the, the design of the system such that you go into a recession, <clears throat> the private sector draws from the public sector. But to be able to draw from the public sector in a recession, the public sector can't allow itself to get over indebted. Namely, there has to be some money in the rainy day fund. And you have to put the money in the rainy day fund during surplus time, uh, you create a surplus during good times. And unfortunately, we ignored that. And I think the real ignoring came right in this time period with George Bush's uh, term where even in good times they were running deficits. That's what killed the goose. We would have we been down probably to one or two billion of debt going into the situation. We're 15 now. Um, so uh, the circuit breakers of the dynamically unstable situation was the automatic, two things were automatic. One is we spent more via not a government passing an act, but a passing a program. And the program was unemployment insurance. And the other one was food stamps. And we used to have another one called welfare. It's an entitlement. If your economic situation is down, you're entitled. And so you get away from Congress uh, getting into what we saw last summer. On the other side, on the tax side, the tax revenue, what was important to that system is that it was a progressive tax structure. So that when income declines, you pay less taxes. Because you go into a lower tax bracket. Okay? Your income goes down, so there's less taxable income, but you're also paying at a lower bracket. So the progressive tax structure was part of the automatic stabilizer that worked so well as long as we had money in the rainy day fund. We ended up running out of money in the rainy day fund. Now, the other, the other 
um, circuit breaker from a downward thrust for the last 60 years has been when we do get into a recession, the Federal Reserve at its next meeting, and they meet every three weeks and can meet on the telephone at a moment's notice, uh, they lower interest rates. And we always had a capacity in the housing market, so if you lower long-term 30-year mortgage rates, the uh, consumer would respond with more housing. So you put those two together, and that was enough to carry us through. We also had a third circuit breaker, and that is we had um, the developed countries of the world, the major developed countries of the world used to meet it, if you remember, and I'm sure most people in this room remember, the, G, the quote, the G7, the group of seven, it was the seven leading industrial countries, and they would get together every six months, and the topic was, well, if these countries are down, who amongst us is going to be, quote, the locomotive of growth? So who can we go to to have expansionary fiscal and monetary policy so that their economy gets stimulated so they buy stuff, goods from other countries? So those were the three mechanisms to keep the system together. And basically we had the debt capacity, the Fed had the balance sheet capacity, the government had the balance sheet capacity, and we did have this working group of G7 that indeed worked together. Today they're trying to resurrect the, G, the G7 by a G20, and they're not talking to each other uh, very effectively. I, I say that, but I have to say that China in this last one was the, was the locomotive of growth. They, they put, the, they put the onus on their back and carried the rest of the world. Are they likely to do it again? It's doubtful. Uh, but that, they ended up being the locomotive of growth uh, in this last recession. So the automatic stabilizers that we put together are now, have now been disconnected. Uh, they've been disconnected. So we don't have anything to stop this thing from going down because this deficit now has to get financed and you start to hit it grease type situations where it's questionable whether you can get it financed because there's no money in the rainy day fund. So, and, and the Fed certainly does not have, uh, at this point, uh, there's no room left to lower interest rates. And even if it did, with an excess three million houses, we're not gonna get the housing response we did. Or if we didn't get it from houses, we got it from uh, re commercial real estate. So all that stuff is gone and we don't have any, any, any um, automatic stabilizer that indeed is working in this situation. China was our last hope and actually still is. Uh, so now we have a situation where we ended up with an awful lot of debt. Uh, basically like the state of Texas, we had a rainy day fund at the federal level and the rainy day fund, you know, in good times you put money in there and bad times you, you spend it. Then if you, if it's really bad times, then what you got, you, you put a note in there, <laughs> a future IOU and all we have are future IOUs. So if you have future IOUs that have accumulated to the extent ours have, you then start to get into a situation like Greece. At some point, the market says no, no mas, no more. Uh, it happened, obviously, with Europe. I, you know, it's any day it's going to go. The only thing that's, I, I, I meant to bring in today's Financial Times, and there's a picture of uh, uh, Merkel in her most stern <laughs> pose possible <laughs> to send a message. Somehow or other, the politicians think you don't have to do anything of substance, all you have to do is send a message. That's literally how they view the problem, that governments can always finance themselves, a la what Dick Cheney said. Um, and all they have to do is, quote, send a message. Well, take a look at today's Financial Times at her pose. It was trying to send a message, but the market's not listening anymore. 